Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. Today is a Research Spotlight episode, which has been made possible through a partnership with Team of Chemistry, aimed at highlighting some of the great work done by Team of Chemistry Journal Awardees. On today's episode, we have with us Dr. Urs Gelrich. Urs earned his diploma in chemistry from Albert Ludwig's University in Freiburg. He subsequently carried out his doctoral work under the supervision of Professor Bernard Bright before coming to work as a postdoc in the group of Professor David Milstein at the Weizmann Institute in Israel. In 2017, he became a junior group leader at the head of Emmy Noether Research Group at Justice Liebig University in Giessen. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Urs. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, Matthew. Thank you very much for the invitation to present our research today. I also would like to thank Team Chemistry for the support. The research project that I want to present you today is inspired by the chemistry of frustrated Lewis pairs. Frustrated Lewis pairs are combinations of sterically encumbered Lewis bases and highly Lewis acidic boranes that do not form adducts and are able to activate strong chemical bonds, such as the one of dihydrogen. I show you here one example of an intermolecular frustrated Lewis pair and one example of an intramolecular frustrated Lewis pair. Note that hydrogen activation by classic frustrated Lewis pairs leads to the formation of borohydrides that consequently serve as hydride donors. The second concept that motivated the research project that I want to present you today is metal ligand cooperation. While classic transition metal complexes activate chemical bonds via an oxidative addition at the metal center, metal ligand cooperation denotes a situation in which one of the ligands is actively involved in the bond activation process. Again, I show you two classic examples. One is the Noyori catalyst and the other one is the pyridine-based pincerucinium complex developed by David Milstein and co-workers. Bond activation by metal ligand cooperation is associated with a change in the first coordination sphere of the transition metal. The ligand that is actively involved in the bond activation turns from an X-type ligand to an L-type ligand or, to bridge the gap to main group chemistry, from a covalently bound substituent to a datively bound ligand. In the case of the Noyori system, this amide substituent becomes an amine ligand. Hydrogen activation by the ruthenium pincer complex leads to rearomatization and the anamide substituent turns into a neutral pyridine ligand. In a metallomimetic approach, we wanted to transfer this reactivity mode to frustrated Lewis pairs. Based on an initial computational study, we synthesized 6 3rd butylpyridone. Addition of 6 3rd butylpyridone to Pierce borane, a Lewis acidic borane with two perfluorphenyl substituents, yields this pyridone borane complex. Upon moderate heating to 60 degrees, the pyridone borane complex liberates dihydrogen and the pyridonate borane is formed. The pyridonate borane can be regarded as an intramolecular frustrated Lewis pair. Indeed, it splits dihydrogen under mild conditions. To sum up, we have developed a simple pyridone borane system that is able to reversibly activate dihydrogen under mild conditions. We were now interested in the change of the BO bonding mode in course of the hydrogen activation. According to our DFT computations, with a dispersion corrected hybrid functional, the hydrogen activation of the pyridonate borane is associated with an elongation of the boron oxygen bond. At the same time, the CO bond shortens, the value we find after hydrogen activation is typical for a CO double bond, indicating the formation of a pyridone. This interpretation is further supported by the experimentally found CO stretching vibration that is typical for the CO double bond of an amide. Thus, there is evidence that upon hydrogen activation, the pyridonate substituent turns into a datively bound pyridone ligand. This is reminiscent of the change of an X-type ligand to an L-type ligand 
upon bond activation by Metal Ligand Corporation. But what are the consequences for the reactivity of the system? According to the Haaland definition of a dative bond, bond scission in an apolar solvent should occur in a heterolytic fashion. That means that the pyridonate borane should be able to dissociate into a pyridone and a free borane upon hydrogen activation. This is a conceptual difference to a classic frustrated Lewis pair where hydrogen bond activation leads, as aforementioned, to the formation of a borohydride that consequently serves as hydride donor. In contrast, the pyridonate borane shows borane reactivity and undergoes hydroborations that require the presence of a trivalent borane. For example, the reaction of the pyridonate borane with styrene under hydrogen pressure yields this alkyl borane pyridone complex that is formed by a reaction sequence consisting of hydrogen activation by the pyridonate borane, dissociation of the pyridone borane complex and the subsequent hydroboration of the styrene by Pierce borane. Recoordination of the pyridone forms then the alkyl borane complex. We exploited the unique reactivity of the pyridonate borane for the semi-hydrogenation of alkynes. The essential step of this catalytic reaction is the hydroboration of an alkyne by Pierce borane. The recoordination of the pyridone to the alkenyl borane initiates a protodiborylation that yields the olefin and regenerates the pyridonate borane as active catalyst. The pyridonate borane activates then dihydrogen and starts the next catalytic cycle. At 80 degree, under 5 bar hydrogen pressure, we were able to hydrogenate 6 different internal alkynes with 5 mole percent of the pyridone borane as catalyst. With slightly higher catalyst loadings of 10 mole percent, we could also successfully hydrogenate 6 terminal alkynes. The hydrogenation of terminal alkynes is challenging because the pyridonate borane does not only activate dihydrogen, it also cleaves the CH bond of terminal alkynes. Exchange experiments with different terminal alkynes showed that this CH cleavage is reversible, which renders the hydrogenation pathway accessible under hydrogen pressure. Notably, if the alkanylborane pyridone complex that is formed upon CH cleavage of the terminal alkyne is heated to 90 degree in the presence of an excess of alkyne, the formation of an anion, the formal gamma dimerization product of the alkyne is observed. According to detailed mechanistic investigations that included not only computations, but also the characterization of key intermediates, the formation of the N in commands with the dissociation of the pyridone alkanyl borane complex. 1,2 carboboration of the alkyne by the alkanyl borane yields then an N in borane. Again, the recoordination of the pyridone initiates a protodiborylation that yields the N in. Since this protodiborylation regenerates the pyridonate borane, it is again possible to close a catalytic cycle. Indeed, with catalytic amounts of the pyridonate borane, we were able to dimerize eight different aromatic and aliphatic alkynes with moderate to very good yields. This is, to the best of our knowledge, the first example of a transition metal-free dimerization of terminal alkynes. We then turned our attention to allyl boranes. Allyl boranes are a prevalent class of xenocleophiles in organic chemistry and are frequently used for the formation of homoallyl alcohols by allylation of aldehydes and ketones. As demonstrated already in the 70s by H.C. Brown, allyl boranes can be prepared by hydroboration of allenes. One recent example of an allyl boration in synthesis is the total synthesis of Brevian amide A that was reported by the group of Lawrence. The fragment that is highlighted in red was introduced by using an allyl borane that was prepared by hydroboration of an allene. We envisioned to use the pyridonate borane for the in situ formation 
of an allele borane by a reaction sequence consisting of hydrogen splitting by the pyridonate borane, dissociation of the pyridone borane complex, and hydroboration of an allene by Pierce borane. To address the question of whether an allele borane generated in this way would be nucleophilic, we reacted the pyridonate borane with phenylalene and acetonitrile as electrophile under an hydrogen atmosphere. This reaction led to the formation of a beta decatimate borane complex that we could isolate by regular column chromatography. It appears that the beta decatimate borane complex was formed by the allylboration of acetonitrile, followed by a 1 2 addition to a second equivalent of acetonitrile. The formation of the beta decatimate borane complex is irreversible. To enable catalytic turnover, we added an additional Lewis acid to capture the primarily formed allele imine prior to the formation of the beta decatimate borane complex. With trisperfluorphenyl borane as additional Lewis acid, we were able to devise a protocol for the allylation of nitriles that required only catalytic amounts of the pyridone borane complex. The allylamines were isolated as their respective borane complexes. This reaction also works with aliphatic olenes. Because the geometric amounts of trisperfluorphenyl borane are required, this reaction is more of a proof of concept. However, it is the first example of the in situ formation of nucleophilic alluboranes from alenes and dihydrogen. Recently, we reported in synthesis the preparation of 6 adamantylpyridone, which commences with the formulation of adamantyl ketone with formate ethyl ester. A Wittig reaction and the condensation under acidic conditions yield then the adamantylpyridone. Conveniently, these two steps can be operated in one pot. The sequence follows a route for the synthesis of substituted pyridones that has been devised by the group of Lukas Hintermann. The molecular structure of 6 adamantylpyridone derived from X-ray analysis shows that it forms a dimer in the solid state. The pyridone borane complex derived from 6 adamantylpyridone and Pierce borane is able to activate dihydrogen. Furthermore, this complex was successfully applied as catalyst for the gem dimerization of terminal alkynes and the semi-hydrogenation of internal alkynes. In the future, we plan to use the bulky adamantyl group as dispersion energy donor in catalytic reactions. I would like to thank my group at the JLU Gießen and the Fonds of the Chemical Industry in Germany and the German Research Foundation for the support of our work. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode and thank you to Urs for a very interesting talk. Thank you as well to Team of Chemistry for making this episode possible. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.